Hey guys, Mr. Backwork here. This is part one of lesson 4.8. We've got two objectives for this video. We are going to use trigonometry to solve some right triangles, and we're going to use trigonometry to help us model and solve some real life problems. So let's take a look at what solving a right triangle means. Okay, what it means is that we're going to be finding the measures of all three angles in our triangle, and we're going to find the length of all three sides of our right triangle. In order to go through and solve a right triangle, we need a couple pieces of information. We either need an acute angle and one of the sides, or we could have just two side lengths. So taking a look at this triangle, we're going to run through and solve it, meaning we're going to find all of the missing information. I see that we're given two angles. Remember what you learned back in geometry. All three angles inside of a triangle have to add up to be 180 degrees. So that must mean that there's 55.8 degrees left over for angle B. Next thing we're going to look at is finding some of those missing sides. And I think I'll start with side A. And I'm going to focus on this 34.2 degree angle that we were given at the very beginning. If we look at how this is set up, A is opposite, and we have our B value, which is adjacent. So we can use a tangent to help us out. We could go tangent of that 34.2 degree angle equals our opposite side A over our adjacent side 19.4. Then in order to get A all by itself, all we have to do is multiply this 19.4 over to the left-hand side. And then I'm just going to type this stuff into my calculator, 19.4 times the tangent of 34.2 degrees. Now be careful, since this is a degree angle, we need to make sure that our calculator is in degree mode. And when I type this in, I'm just going to go to one decimal, since it seems like that's what everything else has on it. Uh, when we type that in, we should get about 13.2 as our length. Now for this last part, we have a bunch of options available to us. We're missing one side from our right triangle. So we could run through and do the Pythagorean theorem, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. That's an option. We could do more trig stuff where we focus on one of our acute angles and do either a sine or a cosine, depending on which angle we're using and which side we want to use. So like I said, a bunch of options. Doesn't really matter which way you do it. We should get about the same answer either way. I'm going to do some more trig stuff focusing on that angle we were given at the very beginning and that side that we were given at the very beginning. So the 19.4 would be adjacent to the 34.2. We're trying to find our hypotenuse. So adjacent and hypotenuse means we're doing a cosine of 34.2 equals the adjacent side 19.4 over our hypotenuse C. Now the right hand side is a fraction, the left hand side is not, but I'm going to turn that into a fraction so that I can do a little bit of cross multiplying. So 19.4 times 1 is 19.4. Cosine of 34.2 times C is the cosine of 34.2 times C. Now I'm going to punch this cosine of 34.2 into my calculator so that I can get a decimal approximation. When we do that, we get about 0.8271 C. And then in order to get C all by itself, we would just divide this decimal over to the left-hand side. So divide by 0.8271. Hit Enter on our calculator. And we end up with a C value that's about 23.5 if we do a little bit of rounding. Our next example is a little bit different. We're given two sides this time. I'm going to find one of the angles right away, and I think I'll start with angle A. If we look at the information we have, side A is opposite of angle A. We also have the hypotenuse, so that would be a sine. So the sine of angle A equals the opposite side over the hypotenuse. Now we're trying to find angle A, so in order to get rid of this sine thing on it, we'll have to use an inverse sine. And whatever we do to one side of our equation, we also have to do to the other side. So I'm going to take the inverse sine of the right-hand side, and I'm just going to type that into my calculator as it is, the inverse sine of 15 over 15.95. When we do that, we end up with angle A being about 70.13 degrees. And I'm going to go two decimals on this one since our one side had two decimals to it. So angle A in our picture is 70.13 degrees. Now if we look at angle B, well we know that our angles have to add up to 180. So angle B has got to be 19.87 degrees. 
We've only got one more piece to find, it's side B. I guess I started with angle A, so I'm going to keep using angle A. B is adjacent, and we have our hypotenuse. So I'm going to use a cosine to help me out. Cosine of 70.13 equals our adjacent side B over the hypotenuse 15.95. In order to get B all by itself, we have to multiply this 15.95 over to the left-hand side. And then in my calculator, I'm taking 15.95 times the cosine of 70.13. When we do that, we get about 5.42 for that B value. All right, last example. Feel free to pause the video and try this one out on your own, and then restart it, and you can check your work with what I get. First thing I'm seeing is we've already got two angles, so I'm going to go ahead and find the third angle. It's got to be 23 degrees, since the angles inside of a triangle have to add up to 180. Now I'm just going to start finding some of the other sides. So maybe we start with angle A up here, and maybe we want to find side A. So those A's are opposite, so I'm going to go sine of 67 equals our opposite side A over 22.5. I'm punching that left-hand side into my calculator. And when we do the sine of 67 to four decimals, I've got 0 0.9205 equals our A over 22.5. I'm going to make this a fraction on the left-hand side so I can do a little bit of cross-multiplying. One times A is A. And if we take 0 0.9205 times 22.5, we should get about 20.7 if we go to one decimal. Looking at finding our other side, B, I'm still going to focus on that 67, but since B is adjacent, we'll have to do a cosine of 67 equals our side B over the 22.5. Again, I would just type this left-hand side into my calculator, and the cosine of 67 is about 0 0.3907 equals our B over 22.5, and a little cross-multiplying, we get B equals about 8.8. .8. I've got a couple of application problems to finish off this video. First one says that we've got safety regulations that state the maximum angle of elevation on a rescue ladder is 72 degrees, and we know that a fire department's longest ladder is 110 feet. We want to figure out the maximum safe rescue height for this fire truck. And I'm going to draw a picture to help us out. So we've got some flat ground, and we've got this ladder raising up to the side of a building, so that's where we're getting this right triangle look. Now it says the maximum this angle of elevation can be is 72 degrees. The ladder, which is this diagonal piece, is 110 feet. We want to figure out the maximum height that it's going to reach, so we're looking at this vertical piece. I'm going to call that my x. So if we're focusing on the 72, x is opposite. We've got the hypotenuse, so this would be a sine of 72 equals that opposite side x over the hypotenuse of 110. I would punch the left-hand side into a calculator. When we do the sine of 72, we get 0.9511 equals our x over 110. Do a little cross multiplying. 110 times 0.9511 is 104.6, and x times 1 is just x. So that missing vertical height is 104.6 feet. So that's the maximum height that this ladder would reach. Okay, last example for this video. We've got an airplane coming in for a landing, and it says it's 100 feet off the ground and 1,600 feet away from its landing point. So I'm going to label some things on this triangle. We know that our plane is 100 feet off the ground, and we are 1,600 feet away from our landing point. We want to figure out our angle of descent. Now, this picture is actually kind of misleading. When we're looking for an angle of descent, we're looking for an angle down from a flat line. So when we're finding this angle of descent, we're actually focusing on this angle in here. But I'm going to use a little geometry to help me out with this. If this is our unknown x, we've got these two parallel lines, the flat line on top and the flat line on bottom. If we focus on these two angles, where x is and this one in here, we call these alternate interior angles in geometry. And remember, alternate interior angles, when we're dealing with parallel lines, have to be congruent or the same size. So if this is x, then this in here also has to be x. And I'm actually going to use this angle to help me figure out this picture. We're trying to find x. We have the opposite side and the adjacent side. So we're going to go with the tangent of x 
equals that opposite side over the adjacent side. So tangent of x equals 100 over 1600. Uh, now we can do a little bit of reducing on the right hand side. Tangent of x equals 1 over 16. Now we want x to be all by itself, so in order to get rid of that tangent on there, we'll have to do an inverse tangent. And whatever we do to one side, we have to do to the other side. So we're going to do inverse tangent of 1 over 16. And when we do that, we should get an x value of about 3.58. And I guess we were in degrees, so this is a degree angle, 3.58 degrees. That's going to be it for this video. Please remember to fill out the Google form linked in the description down below. And thanks for watching.